My yeah. point is that what we have is, is that we have a poisoned national dialogue in which wherever you consume your media, you are getting a constant set of emotional instructions. That is the concept yep. of Russell conjugation. And because we don't practice critical feeling, we know about critical thinking. Yep. But we don't know that mm -hmm. most of our feelings are not our feelings, but feelings that we have inherited yes. through daily programming. And as a result, you know, for example, I know that you're evil and you're the devil and I'm not supposed to be here. Yeah. But here I am. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a <laughs> fact. Can, can, well, can I let out a more? <laughs> yeah. I've always wanted to make a deal with the devil, but yeah. the devil never returns my phone calls. Yeah. The, the situation that we're in is that we have to realize that we are being deranged and therefore we can't even mount a, a response to the COVID epidemic. That was a layup. You just have a Manhattan Project. You say, who are the smart people across virology, mm -hmm. uh, epidemiology, mathematics, uh, economists, who are the geopolitical theorists? You immediately uh, expedite um, security clearances. You test them all. You get transport. You put them in a dorm with tons of whiteboards, lots of coffee, and you say, you're not going to see your family for two months. Get it done. We can't even do that. Well, because so many, so many of those public health officials were writing politicized letters in defense of leftist protests to the tune of 1,200 at a time. Not just. We also had a problem with our Surgeon General who decided that masks uh, weren't a good idea or, or Dr. Fauci or the head of the CDC. And why? Because we have a problem that we lie about public health. Many mm -hmm. people who go into public health believe in the public good and for the public to engage in... Um, beneficial behaviors that you're solving a massive prisoner's dilemma. Of course, it would be better if everybody else took a vaccine and you didn't have to in right. case there's any risk with the vaccine as an example of a typical coordination problem. So one of the problems that we have is, is that we told obvious lies. Now the lie, the most important one, is, is that the academic literature had told us to stock um, supplies and ICU beds and make sure that we were ready for surges because surges are situations in which you don't have a what would be called a Poisson process of random arrivals that determine your needs. You have a correlated event. So if you have rioting in a city, you're going to need much more policing suddenly. Yeah. We were completely unprepared. And because we were unprepared, we decided that what we would do is to lie to the American people and we would tell them things that made no sense. So either we might lie to them mm -hmm. from the Democratic side about the, the, the idea. The inconsistencies were massive and head jerking and every American noticed them at one point yes, or but, another. The idea is that Nancy Pelosi should resign, Donald Trump should resign, Anthony Fauci should resign, the head of the CDC should re resign. We should not be talking to the WHO. We need to get the lying sons of bitches out of the chairs in which they have the ability to lie for some reason to the American public, which degrades our faith in government, in data, in science, and in reason. And quite honestly, it's much more important that we have faith that not all of our expert class uh, is psychopathic. Not all of them is, are on the take. Mm -hmm. That it isn't a war of yeah. the very rich and their experts against, you know, as expert witnesses, if you will, against the rest of us pretending to be objective, but actually carrying out the orders of somebody else. So we have a serious situation in which our entire leadership class of both parties, no offense, sir, is unworkable. And the inability, and I mean, I was tweeting about this quite openly, which is we are lying. What we are saying about masks not working is because we're covering for our own failure to heed our own literature. We were be believing the first guys instead of... Uh, it's a their, very easy speech that you give. You say, you know, you know, ladies and gentlemen, we have to level with the American public. We are unprepared and we can find fault and perhaps we should do so after the national emergency. But right now we need to pull together in order to make sure that our... Uh, first responders, our medical personnel, people who are on the front lines are protected. We don't have an inadequate supply of personal protective equipment, of ICU beds. The real reason that we need to flatten the curve is because we're trying to avoid what we might call um, deaths of discretion, where we have a triage si yeah. situation. And we saw that in Italy, uh, tragically. Yeah. Well, okay, but the point is we have a limbo bar, and the limbo bar was too low. And that's why we were flattening the curve. And the limbo bar was supposed to be higher. And I believe actually George W. Bush did better with this and that it, this had then got drawn down under Obama, not replaced under Trump. And so whatever was going on with the PPE stuff, it was a failure of government mm -hmm. that we then foisted onto the shoulders of the American people. And, and we is, also had an enormous failure, failure with testing, particularly early on rolling it out. Well, it, it was, we were completely incompetent. We'd, we'd outsource so much of our supply chain to China, not realizing uh, that we have a geopolitical a rival. because Massive, yeah. ca catastrophic 
tragic mistake. We, we've got to change. Let's see if there is any cause for optimism. How do we get from Othello to Midsummer Night's Dream? Oh, well, key issue is, is that we have to start talking about our own failures. And hmm. in part, which, what I hope you've heard yeah. is, is that I'm willing to call out the left, the right, and the libertarian. Like the libertarian problem is that it doesn't work to pretend that we're all atomistic. We see that with right. uh, respect to a contagion and masks and the like. Sure. Right. So um, Arnold Kling has this beautiful description. He says that you have three groups, progressives, conservatives, and libertarians. Libertarians are animated principally by hating coercion. Hmm. Progressives are animated principally by hating oppression. And Conservatives are principally am animated by uh, needless loss of hard-won traditions and gains mm -hmm. over past generations. Well and the answer is, is that any sensible person should want to make sure that they're optimizing among the three and not to become part uh, of a simplistic situation whereby they so hate coercion or so hate oppression that they lose sight of the entire picture and therefore lose the plot of the American project. Quite honestly, if I'm, if I'm honest, sure. uh, I have to be honest that uh, one of the things that I liked best was when uh, you became animated um, because of the bizarre behavior of our current president. And I, I know that for political reasons, uh, you have moved closer to him. But one of the great dangers of Donald Trump, and he's got certain benefits, which is that he's the first person to figure out how to come up the system mm -hmm by not playing the game, and we almost had that on the Democratic side with Bernie Sanders in a certain sense, we have a situation whereby Donald Trump was, um, you know the, the old song about, I know an old lady who swallowed a fly, so I uh, made a parody of it, which was, I know a young country that voted a Trump, uh, a Clinton to bump, we voted a Trump. We have now gone down a path where Donald Trump is a disaster with respect to the oral Torah of the United States. We have the written Torah, which is the Constitution, but in Judaism, you also have the culture around it. And this man is so bizarre, so strange, that he is destroying the relationship that many of us have with the country because he's actually a genius. He's an unbelievable strategist. Those tweets, they are not haphazard. They are not brain farts. They are very carefully designed. He knows exactly what he's doing, I believe. And in part, we have now created a culture whereby we are weaponizing these very exotic techniques in, Instead of doing what we're supposed to be doing, which is being productive, trying to ensure freedom, making sure that we're taking care of the countries that rely on us for their protection, trying to be more decent, more, more uh, circumspect. And I think it's absolutely imperative, for example, that we start to examine things. Which, I mean, I'm just racing to get to this. Mm -hmm. um, we stumbled over this Jeffrey Epstein situation, mm -hmm. and I have not yeah. heard our Iago media ask the question, is Jeffrey Epstein attached to the best of our knowledge of the State Department, the CIA, the FBI, the NSA, to any intelligence service? And is there a reason that you are refusing to ask this question to the point that you can get no comment onto the record? So, right. So for what it's worth, I emphatically agree with you. What well, Jeffrey Ep Epstein did, at least all of the evidence and testimony to date, is grotesque. It is offensive. And maybe it, it, it is a travesty of justice that, that he died in his cell through whatever causes led to that. And, and I think there is an imperative that everyone involved, everyone complicit, be held accountable. And, and I think the question you're raising is an important Why one that needs to be asked. the New York Times or the Washington Post yeah. or Fox News ask the question, was this person attached to intelligence to the point where we can either get an emphatic, of course we would never do that, or uh, no comment? Yeah. Now, if we can get either one of these things... And for what it's worth in D.C., my sense is most people assume he was attached to intelligence. Well, if now, I don't know of any, any evidence to that effect. I'm, but, and, no, but, and it but, is a question I'm called a crazy that needs person. to be asked. Now, I'm called a crazy person, or, you know, a conspiracy theorist, for saying, why aren't we talking more about the Wuhan Institute of Virology? Why aren't we uh, talking... And we've had a whole podcast on that question. Why aren't we talking exactly more about Jeffrey Epstein? Why yeah. are we not calling for a return to the Church and Pike committees of the 1970s to give us closure so that if we did nothing wrong, we can know that we did nothing wrong. And the abuses of intelligence and law enforcement, I think, are a profoundly consequential point. But, but l let me say this, just, just at a time of intense division, at a time of tribalism, and you're right, atomized information, atomized news sources, partisan propaganda news sources, 
social media where we unfriend those who disagree and only listen to those who agree and have a constantly reinforcing ecosystem. I remain optimistic for our country, and I think what I hope what what has just just uh, uh, occurred in this podcast, which is having a reasonable, civil, productive conversation with those with whom we disagree, at least on some issues, yep. uh, is is at the heart of the American experiment. Who we should be as a democracy, and I hope is the path to emerge from tragedy in into. Instead, the the uh, what I consider to be the hero's journey uh, of of our nation state and and America's journey towards a more perfect union and a more just society.